be like to drive a monster truck? What about the original? The biggest, the baddest, the one and only Bigfoot. Well, I hope you're sitting down because this week we're doing just that. Host Trent McGee is kicking off a three-part adventure driver series where he's actually going to get behind the wheel of Bigfoot. Along the way, we'll learn some of the history behind Bigfoot and all about the technology that makes Bigfoot the most advanced monster truck in the world. We're also going back to Moab to check out some crowd favorites. So get ready for one heck of a ride. Now that is some American muscle. Now we're going to try to avoid some of those wad up scenes. And to do that, we're sending Trent to Bigfoot school, where he'll be enlisting in the aid of the Bigfoot team, including Jim Kramer and Dan Runty. These guys will also give us a real education on the progression and technology behind the monster truck. And with both guys being drivers of this beast, we'll get a first-hand perspective on being behind the wheel of one of the most prolific trucks in the world. I think I just heard the bell, so it looks like school is now in session. Now we're here with Jim Kramer of Bigfoot 4 before, and Jim here is the only guy that's ever driven every Bigfoot ever produced. Well, obviously there is no better person to take us through the specs on this truck, so uh, fire away. Well, Trent, behind you stands Bigfoot number 15. It is the newest truck in Bob Chandler Stables. And the thing that makes it kind of unique from the rest of the trucks is, is uh, we've got a new shock design on here, bypass shock, much like you see on a Class 8 off-road uh, truck but also an air spring with it. So we use one control shock and one air spring, just kind of set the ride height. Uh, we've got a 1400 horsepower engine in the back. We put the engine in the back for balance. We like to try to land back first, or if it's gonna land back first, that's the best way, or at least maybe a little front first. The balance is like 65, 35 on that. The other thing about this truck is, is visibility. Once we put the engine in the back, we put the driver in the middle. Big aspect for safety. He's further away from anything, piece of car, dirt, or anything coming through the cab. It allows us to build a much stronger roll cage around him. It gets the truck balanced better. Believe it or not, a guy sitting to the side affects the balance even of a 10,000 pound truck. Uh, Jim, tell me a little bit about the uh, drivetrain on this thing. Well, this truck uses the new uh, ZF axle, and uh, you'd finally, you commonly find this on a construction site. They're four wheel steer. They're built very heavy to support weight because these things pick up pallets that weigh a ton or so and put them on the second story of a building. So we use this axle. It's been very tough for us. We like the wheel brakes. Each individual wheel brakes are probably one of the only monster trucks in the industry that have that feature. Hmm. So it's one tire's on the ground, you got the foot in the brake, it sucks the other three down. Now speaking of the tires, tell me a little bit how much these things weigh, their size, etc. Well, they're, they're Firestone off-road tires, and basically, basically they are uh, designed for uh, commercial fertilizer spreaders you might see in the Midwest. They start life at 880 pounds apiece. We put them in a giant tire lathe, cut about three-fourths of the tread right off to begin with. Then we take a hot knife or a regrooving tool you might see in a big tire shop, and each individual line there you see is a stroke of that tool. So it takes one man four, about four days to cut one tire. But when you're finished, instead of a, a thousand pound tire wheel combination, you're down to about 550, 600 pounds, which makes all the difference in performance. Man, a tire with that much bite and that much weight has got to be murder on the transmission. Well, there's 644 square inches of rubber on the ground per tire. That equates to a lot of bite. And you take a monster truck and jump it, and you come down the back tires first, the whole weight of the truck plants the tires. It's very hard on transmissions. We do use a Ford C6 with a BTE tar converter, but it is the weakest link of the truck and something that we're always progressively trying to make better. Well, that's great. Tell you what, we need to take a break, but when we come back, 
I'm going to get in this thing. Stay tuned. We're back, and as you can see, I am inside the Bigfoot monster truck, and Jim here is going to walk me through the controls on this thing. It really doesn't look too complicated, but run me through this. Just like a car. You know, even though it's a monster truck, you have a brake and a gas pedal, automatic transmissions work a lot better than monster trucks. Just right. You have a lot of control in that target where you can't beat it. Gotcha. Uh, the shifter's a little bit different. It's a racing type shifter. You have to pick up on it. Okay. You come out of park, uh -huh. go to reverse. reverse. Now go to neutral and it goes down. Uh-huh. Now try to go back to reverse again. See, it's locked out. Gotcha. So you can't miss a shift and hit reverse. Now on this shifter, there's two items that you really need to be familiar with in a monster truck. This is the rear steering switch. Okay. It's a rocker. If you turn left, push the left side of the switch and the back end will follow you. Now when you want to make a, uh, a transition from a turning mode to a straight mode, press the red button and hold it in. Gotcha. That straightens up the back and you straighten up the front. Okay. So you basically drive with your left hand in the front and you drive with your right hand in the rear. Okay. I don't know, man. I think I pretty well got it. You know, we got a nice little arena here, and I want you to go out there and just get a feel for the truck and, uh, you know, go through the gears, give it some gas, make sure they try the brakes, get a feeling of what it feels like so you so you know how much pressure you have to apply the brakes, you'll know before you start to go on the car. So right now, it's just like a practice drive, and once you feel comfortable, we're turning loose on the automobiles. Sweet. Well, let's get suited up. Let's go. All right. All right, it's time for Trent to take his exam. Let's see how he does out there. Jim is going to hang with him for a while in the cockpit, helping him get a feel for the 1,400 ponies and the very effective braking system. And it appears Trent can turn in his permit for a license because Jim says he's ready to go solo. Let's see some car crushing, McGee. Hmm, not quite the thrill of a lifetime on that run. Let's try another go at him. Yeah, I saw that air, Trent. You're starting to feel it. Jim said one more time, and don't make me paint you yellow. Yeah, baby, boy. I bet Trent's right leg is looking very Elvis-like about right now. Thank you very much. Let's get a word from the famous driver. All right, Trent, what do you think? Man, that was incredible. <laughs> All right, now, Trent, you get out and you do these segments. You drove a lot of different kind of vehicles. Mm -hmm. Can you, does this equate to anything that you've driven in the past? Man, I don't know. I mean, I haven't spent much time in a drag car. It's, it might be a cross between something like that, but it's so different. I, best thing I can equate it to in terms of all the bucking and bouncing and stuff like that is like a 1,400 horsepower rock crawler. <laughs> I, I haven't spent much time in a rock crawler, but I can't imagine a 1,400 horsepower rock crawler. I think you fly over the rocks instead of crawl over them. Man, I tell you what, guys, this was unreal. That was awesome. Now, Trent, don't get us wrong. That was great. But we want to know what it's like to fly in this Bigfoot. So let's talk to one of the nuts that does these sort of things. Well, I'm here with Dan Runty. He's the driver of one of the Bigfoot trucks. Dan, how long have you been doing this? Actually, I've been with the company for about 16 years, driving for about 14. So it's, I mean, I've been at it a while. It started out in one of the one of Bob's older trucks, you know, a, a leaf spring truck. and. What you just drove here is a lot different than, you know, than a leaf spring truck. I mean, it's about two ton lighter and uh, we do our own chassis now and our own suspension. Got away from all the springs, you know, we're running nitrogen shocks, so we get a lot better travel and a lot better suspension. Feels a lot better on the driver. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, Dan. I understand uh, you hold a certain record to your name, don't you? Yeah, actually we do. Um, it's actually a company record. I mean, if it wasn't for the guys in the shop and you know, the guys that work as crew, uh, we would have never got that done. We jumped over a 727 in an air show, and it holds a long jump record at 202 foot. It hurt a little bit. <laughs> now, you talked a little bit about how uh, the, the older trucks and the old leaf springs and things like that, those had to have been just murder. Well, it, they are. I mean, it's just, you know, they bounce. There was no, there was, you know, we were lucky if we got seven inches of travel out of these. These new trucks were getting 30 in the back, 20 in the front, you know, and it, it's two ton lighter, so it's just, everything's working together. It's technology that's moved along. You know, Chandler's been in business for 26, about 27 years now, and it's just, everybody's, you know, changing, and if you're not changing with the times, you're getting behind. Uh, I have to ask you, though, if you weren't driving Bigfoot, 
what would you be doing now? Actually, I, I didn't expect to drive when I started coming to work for Bigfoot. I started out crewing, you know, it's, it's just one of them things that'd be a neat job. I don't know what I'd be doing if I wasn't doing this, to be honest with you, it's, it's a blast. What's it like being a celebrity in, in the uh, monster truck or at least the 4x4 circles? I don't know. I don't look at it quite that way. It's If it wasn't for the kids coming out, and I mean, all it takes is one kid at every show to say, that was so cool or that was so neat. It's it's fun to have them come up. That's a lot of it. The, the crowd's probably the main thing, and if the crowd's into it, we're into it. I mean, yeah, they look at you a little different, but I'm the same as anybody else. We just having fun. Well, that's pretty obvious, Dan. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you letting me drive your truck. Thank you, Trent. You did a fine job, by the way. Thanks. Let's see what 14 years of experience looks like over the same group of cars. Man, he makes it look easy. Guys, that was absolutely incredible. It's like nothing I've ever experienced in my life. If you ever get a chance to drive one of these things, do it. Now, Jim, thank you very much. You, Dan Runcie, and of course, the whole Bigfoot Bob.